Hi, I'm going to do another video. I decided um, because I have a thesis defense in an hour and a half. I'm in my office at The Ohio State University. Um, I know some people don't like it when we call it that, but also if I don't call it that, if I just call it Ohio State University, somebody will say to me, don't you mean The Ohio State University? You really cannot win with Ohio State University or the Ohio State University when it comes to um, articles, really. So anyway, I'm here in my office. Um, this is where I work. I don't work here very much, but this is where I work today. Um, look, look at the quad. Isn't it collegiate? Um, okay. I, yes, I have um, a thesis defense today that I am leading, and um, I should eat lunch. I should eat this frozen meal that I brought, but I'm not hungry, um, and I'm burned out, and I don't want to do any work, so um, I don't want to go to the post office. I don't want to answer emails. I don't want to do anything, so um, I'm going to talk to this camera about rejection so that I can feel like I'm doing something. Um, so here in my office, I have this box of rejection slips. I am 34 years old. I have been accumulating these rejection slips since I was about 15 um, or 16, something like that. When I was in high school, my writing teacher encouraged me to submit my poems to literary magazines, and I had no idea what that was. And she said, it's okay, we'll do it together. Um, so we started doing it together and I started getting rejected and I started accumulating these little pieces of paper. Um, and there was nothing at stake. It didn't bother me to get rejected. Um, as far as I remember, I just sent the poems out to more places because it always seemed like there were more places. I had that book, Poets Market, or Maybe I had writer's market first and then got poet's market. And I was like, I will never run out of journals to submit to. Um, I actually didn't get an acceptance from a journal until, well, f at least five years after that. Um, I was submitting and submitting and um, nobody took anything uh, until I was in college. And... Yeah, I don't think a single one of, no, that's not true. I was going to say I don't think a single one of my poems has ever been accepted, but I do think I got one poem acceptance once um, and quit writing poetry after that. Um, actually, when I was in high school, um, I was very serious about poetry, and um, a visiting writer to my high school told me, he read my poems, and he said, well, you know, you're a good high school writer, you're, you're a good high school poet, but you're not a good poet, are you? And I was like, uh, no, because you're a man and you're telling me I'm not, so no, I'm not. And I stopped writing poetry after that. Um, those poems were fine. Actually, one of them ended up being um, the basis for a chapter from My Body is a Book of Rules, my first book of nonfiction. Um, the chapter about Kurt Cobain is based on a poem, a long poem I wrote in high school. Um, and much of the language at the beginning of that essay is taken directly from that poem. Um, anyway, once I got to college, I wasn't writing poetry anymore, but I was still submitting it. And um, there was a literary magazine called Free Lunch, I believe that would give a free subscription to any serious poet who submitted and requested a subscription, I think. And it would tell you on the rejection slip whether you were um, deemed a serious poet and whether you were going to get a subscription. When my rejection slip came back, uh, the no box was checked. No subscription, not a serious poet. So I was like, to hell with this, like, why am I doing this? I became a history major. Um, I figured I'll just be a historian. Like, I'm not a good poet. I hear you loud and clear. I'm not a writer. 
Um, I tried that, but then I started writing fiction just like in my free time. Um, and I really liked it. So I kept going with that. Um, I kept writing fiction and I started taking fiction workshops and realized I was actually pretty good at fiction and I actually really liked it. Um, I think I got, I got a couple of uh, flash fiction pieces accepted in college. And so I thought, all right, this is what I was supposed to do. I went into my MFA straight out of college. And um, while I was there, I immediately switched to nonfiction. Um, and I was in my second year submitting to lots and lots and lots of journals. Many of these came in during my time at the University of Washington. Um, many of them came in with no markings on them, just form rejections. I have three from the Cincinnati Review alone, it looks like. It's got clusters from so many publications. There's just there's so many in here. There's so much stuff. Um, some of them have little notes, but most of them don't. And, um, and so I... Lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, during grad school, I believe I submitted like more than a hundred times over the course of those two years, mostly in my second year. And, um, I didn't get any acceptances. Eventually I maybe got, I think, two acceptances for the essays that would become My Body is a Book of Rules. Um, that manuscript, well, okay, so once I had a manuscript, I started looking for an agent. I was rejected by 67 agents. Um, once I did get an agent, 43 editors rejected the manuscript. Um, so I read a tweet the other day. I feel like I've been talking about rejection a lot. Um, and it is that time of year when we are sending our MFA graduates out into the world of rejection and acceptance and um, terror, ambivalence, uh, joy, whatever, all the stuff that comes with writing. Um, and so I'm thinking about rejection a lot, having a lot of conversations about rejection. And, you know, and I read a tweet the other day that said that J.K. Rowling's, uh, like the first Harry Potter book or whatever, was rejected 13 times. Like, if something is rejected 13 times, I don't care to hear about it. Like, tell me if you've gotten more than 40 rejections. Um, like, 13 is not a big deal. I feel like I've gotten 13 rejections in a day. That's an exaggeration, but I've definitely gotten five rejections in a day from editors. Um, so, you know, all that's to say that if you are getting rejected, um, it doesn't really mean anything necessarily. It can. I was an editor at The Rumpus for um, a little while, I don't remember how long, and I rejected tons of stuff. And a lot of it I rejected because I had asked for lyric essay and I got sent stuff that it was that was not lyric essay. And um, some of it got published in wonderful, highly visible um, publications. And I was very happy for the writer, but I, it was not lyric essay. And so immediately it was not what I was looking for. There are other reasons um, that work gets rejected that I think are unfair, but it doesn't mean you can do anything about them. And I gave this a lot of thought um, when I looked through my rejections from agents and editors a year ago. Um, and, you know, what I noticed was that a lot of people had said, you know, they couldn't connect with my Alyssa narrator figure or I think somebody said they felt too distant, distanced, um, which seems uh, like it could not possibly be true, considering um, the intensity of the work and the 
intimacy and the closeness of um, that, you know, of like how much I tried to get down to the bone with that um, storytelling, I guess. Lots of people, you know, say things like they can't connect or, um, and of course there's the regular um, rejection, you know, I just didn't love it and I have to love it. And there's nothing really that we can do about those kinds of rejections, I don't think. Um, and it's unfortunate, but sometimes I really give a lot of thought to them. And um, I just think about what it was like for me being that young woman. I think I was like 24 or 25 when I was looking for an agent. Being that young woman who felt um, disconnected from everybody around her and... I felt that I had written that book in an attempt to be understood um, and to try to make my insides known to people. Um, and so it really felt hurtful and damaging to get that kind of rejection, you know, being told that the reader couldn't connect with me. Um, that doesn't mean there's anything I can do about it, but you know, I have been thinking about how personal rejection can be. As much as I tried to harden myself to it, you know, getting rejected from the time I was 15, that was like, you know, 10 years of rejection at that point that I was sending my actual book out. And it hurt so much more than I could have anticipated. Um, it was terrifying. It was hurtful. And I thought that you know, it was possible that the book would never come out. It did. Happy ending. Um, but it took a long time and there was a lot of fear involved. Um, I don't submit work very much anymore. Um, or really ever. I'm just kind of trying to hold on to it. That's another thing, you know, I feel kind of conflicted about is the idea of, um, sending out work as it's finished. You know, I think it can be really a good idea to hold on to things until, if you if you feel like you're working on a book, to hold on to things, um, you know, until you feel like you actually have a whole thing that's a book and just see how everything hangs together um, before you immediately send out. That's essays, I don't know. And that's just my opinion, but um, I feel like I've talked enough and I'm getting tired of hearing my own voice. Um, so that's my whole thing with rejection. I've been rejected a lot more probably than J.K. Rowling, and um, I too have lived to write the Harry Potter novels. Um, so um, I don't have anything else to say.